So this video was supposed to be super nice and in-depth, but thanks to this monster over here and we found at our imaging monster. spot, uh, we were forced to abort our video over there. So we had to go home super early, but Don't we still no had regrets. some stuff. <laughs> yeah, no regrets. If you want to know more about Stella's story, we'll have that up um, linked here. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. We'd never had the chance to image with a modified camera before. So thanks Daniel for lending us the super compact Canon M200. So Daniel uh, modifies cameras uh, for Astro. So we'll have a link below, check it out. He also sells like pre-modded ones. So you can either ship your camera out to him for him to uh, modify it, or you can just get a, a, a pre-modded camera already. But we were able to take some test shots. So uh, excited, cause we're gonna get to compare them together with our um, 7D Mark II, which is very exciting. And although it's not like super duper impressive, it's still very interesting. Yeah, we'll do what we can with what we have. Um, let's check it out. Okay, so none of these shots are going to be impressive because they're only 30 seconds long each, but Let's see if we can spot any differences. Because if we do, that means a proper long exposure shot would reveal much more. Here is Cygnus, taken with a stock 7D Mark II. You can spot the shape of the swan here. Now, here it is with the modified camera. We don't really see any differences, but after aligning the two shots and comparing them side by side, you can see that the HA region around the North American nebula is much easier to see with the modified camera. The nebulae around the Seda region is also more prominent here. I think if we took a 5 minute shot, the difference between the two would be incredible. Now here is Cassiopeia, first with the stock DSLR camera, and now with the modified mirrorless camera. Now, if we compare a close-up view, we can see that the heart and soul nebulae pop out much more on the modified camera, and they're almost invisible on the stock 30 second shot. Lastly, on the Orion area. On the stock version, only the bright M42 is visible, as well as the flame nebula. On the modified mirrorless version, you can also spot the horsehead nebula and the gas forming Barnard's loop. It is very impressive considering that it is a mere 30 second test shot. So we were able to image this Orion region uh, for just one hour doing 30 second exposures only. And this is a result. And this is very impressive because for the cleanest image of Bonner's loop, we would usually do like five to six minute exposures um, you know, for at least four hours. So doing just one hour with tiny 30 second exposures and having this result is really great. So this tiny camera uh, did a really great job at imaging uh, in such uh, a short time. Yeah, and we imaged the same area with our stock DSLR camera a few years ago, which you can see here. This was 3.6 hours of total exposure time, which is like four times longer than we did with this stock, uh, with this modified camera. And that's actually really impressive. Uh, it was also the same lenses and same Bortle 4 spot. So quickly, let's talk about what's the point of modding a camera uh, for this hobby. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure there are many beginners watching this video right now. So uh, yeah, why would you ever bother uh, modifying a stock camera? There is a very extended and really good long way to say it, but we're gonna cut it short, you can read the rest of that in the blog, but basically allowing, a, modifying a camera allows you to make it more sensitive to things like uh, hydrogen alpha, and that makes it a lot easier for taking nighttime photography. So this is done by removing the IR cut filter, uh, but there are several different ways to, to modify a camera. So once again, go online on our text version and you will learn much more about uh, modifying the camera. What it means. Uh, but yeah, like the, the main goal here is to really grab as much HA as possible, uh, which is blocked by the stock cameras. So HA is really, really uh, rich in so many nebulae in the sky, and even in some galaxies. So there are thousands and thousands of deep sky objects uh, that are full of HA. For example, the Rosette Nebula, the Orion Nebula, of course, uh, the Horsehead Nebula. So, um, and all of that is just done by removing the IR cut filter. Yeah, um, pretty much yeah, most of the time, yeah. Removing this filter really allows you to get much more HA. Uh, also, anywhere in Cygnus, um, like around the Seder region, is just full of HA. And so this is why it's really popular uh, among beginner and you know amateurs in general to remove this filter and modify um, the camera you have if you don't really want to go into uh, a dedicated astronomy camera just yet. 
So stock cameras come with the air cut filter by default, but there are some exceptions to this, like the discontinued Canon RA and the Nikon 810A, which were built for astrophotography. So they come just straight from the factory already pre-modified, but they are a little on the expensive side. Now you may be asking, are you still able to do daytime photography or uh, daytime video with a modded camera? So the answer is once again, it depends on which mod you got. Okay, so here is a test during the daytime. Uh, you can see me here. Uh, I am inside the house. And if we go outside, let's check it out. It also seems like the colors are fine. So yes, you can use a modified camera for daytime as well. So with our camera that we received here, the IR cut filter was removed, of course, as well as the anti-aliasing low-pass filter. And uh, we also have a better luminance sensor filter on top. So with this particular mod, uh, I, we can still do daytime uh, video, as you can see here, and photos. Uh, by default, it's still a bit red, so many modes um, have the same thing, so you kind of have to change the white balance for daytime. But also some other modes, uh, and there is one, for example, where you can't really change the white balance, you actually have to uh, purchase a OWB filter, which is an original white balance filter to attach uh, right here before the lens is attached. So it's like a clip-on filter uh, to still film and do stuff in daytime. That but, sounds hard. Yeah, so if you only care about astrophotography uh, for this modded camera, then who cares? Don't even bother with daytime. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> okay, so one more question that you uh, might wonder is should you get a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera? So nowadays, mirrorless cameras are much more popular, uh, you know, more and more in this astro world because they are much smaller. This is a mirrorless camera. This is a DSLR camera. So it's much smaller, much lighter. This is very bulky. It's uh, also more expensive. So uh, mirrorless cameras are really uh, on the rise now. Um, Another advantage of mirrorless cameras is the fact that it's easier to reach back focus with them. They have a shorter back focus flange. And one last thing also is that you can actually attach some mirrorless cameras to telescopes like the RASA, for example, the RASA 8, RASA 11, and, and so on. Um, but you cannot use, a, for example, a DSLR camera on, on a telescope like a RASA. They also do great with fast telescopes like a F3 and faster thanks to their fantastic sensor illumination casting no mirror shadows on telescopes with fast optics. Yeah, so right now if I had to start over uh, and buy my first camera, I would go definitely with a mirrorless camera and not a DSLR camera. Um, so in the end, should you or should you not get a modified camera? If you like the simplicity of DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras and you're just not ready to jump into the world of astro-dedicated cams, then yes, absolutely, it's a good option for you. Using a modified camera allows you to capture more signal um, and the ease of use of DSLR and mirrorless um, cameras have great features like LCD screens, uh, fewer cables, and buttons. <laughs> Actual buttons, yeah. However, if you're planning to do Astro for a long time, um, your camera is going to lack a cooling system, which is the main draw of Astro dedicated cams. If you think you're going to upgrade to a cooled camera uh, in, in the next year or so, then I would wait. Uh, don't bother modifying your camera. But if you don't plan to, if you really want to keep it simple, then I think it's a good idea to get a modified camera uh, or modify your current one. Uh, something you can do yourself, as a way. You can modify your camera yourself. You can take out the, the filter yourself, but it's very Just tricky. Just be careful. It's, it's very, it's very um, risky. So it takes a long time. I think it takes like three or four hours to do it yourself, and it's very risky. So I would, myself, I would not even bother trying. Unless uh, you have a lot of confidence, I guess. Yeah, if you're good with your hands, give it a try. But if you're a uh, tinker. I think I would just get it done you know, by professional instead. So yes, if you do want to get your camera uh, professionally modified or get a pre-modded one, um, this is from Astro Gear. So we'll have a link below. And honestly, they did a very, very good job. Uh, we are really, really impressed with uh, the pictures we captured, especially Bollard's loop uh, with just one hour. So we know for a fact they do a great job, so we definitely recommend them. And uh, yeah, give it a try. 
Uh, we'll have the link below. I think the price is start around like 169 or something like that. So it's very affordable, which is great. Yeah, go check it out what they have. Uh, they have a bunch of, of cameras uh, pre-modded and they can also receive your camera through the mail, uh, mod it and then send it back to you, ready to capture some image. So we'll see you guys next time. And uh, remember to see our text version uh, below. Down below. And uh, class guys.